I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the ABCs of antihypertensives. So those are the ACE inhibitors, the beta blockers, and the calcium channel blockers. So let's jump in to our first one in alphabetical order, A, ACE inhibitors. So ACE actually stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. And if you remember back to A and P, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, right? So angiotensin is a hormone that causes vasoconstriction, which in turn increases your blood pressure. So the way these meds work is they come in and they stop this from happening. So they work here and they prevent angiotensin 1 from becoming angiotensin 2. And therefore, it has a vasodilating or lower blood pressure effect. They also block aldosterone, which causes a decrease in sodium and water retention. And they also decrease peripheral vascular resistance, again, lowering the blood pressure. All of these things work together to lower the blood pressure. Some special positives about ACE inhibitors is even though they do all this, they do not cause an increase in cardiac output, an increase in heart rate, or an increase in contractility. So they're not making the heart work harder, which is a good thing because we don't want the heart to have to work harder. When it comes to our side effects, they're pretty easy to remember because we have Captopril, which is actually one of the ACE inhibitors that's commonly prescribed. But we can use it as a device to remember the side effects. C is for cough. And anything underlined in green here is a common side effect. Anything in red is a bad thing, an adverse effect, dangerous, okay? So C is for cough, often a dry cough. They will complain of it. Angioedema, obviously that's not good. We don't want our patients to have that. And as a matter of fact, it is contraindicated in patients who have a history of angioedema. So if you know that about your patient, it's not appropriate for them to be on ACE inhibitors. Protein in the urine, taste changes, so not being able to taste certain things as well. O is for other, like headaches. Potassium increased, so hyperkalemia. R is for renal impairment. I is for itching or rashes. And then L is for low blood pressure or orthostatic hypotension. Now, I always think this is kind of funny because the job is to lower the blood pressure, right? That's the goal of this. So how is low blood pressure a side effect? And when I say this, I mean like dangerously low blood pressure. Orthostatic hypotension. This is when our patient goes from like a sitting to a standing position and their blood pressure drops too quickly and they feel dizzy and faint and they might even pass out. The labs we're monitoring with these patients are potassium and white blood cell counts. So our potassium, of course, they're at risk for hyperkalemia, so too much potassium. And then their white blood cell count, neutropenia, so lower neutrophils, can be a side effect in some of these medications. So we need to be a little bit more careful about monitoring our patients for that. These are just some examples of commonly prescribed um, ACE inhibitors. And you know they have something in common, right? They all end in P-R-I-L. So that's one of the little triggers, one of the little tricks you can remember to if you're not sure if it's an ACE inhibitor or not. So if you see a question on an exam and you see that it ends in PRIO, that's probably a pretty good clue that it's an ACE inhibitor. So if you know what ACE inhibitors work, then you'll know what that med does. And then finally, I wanted to discuss our nursing intervention. So the nurse's responsibility when taking care of a patient who is on an ACE inhibitor. Aside from monitoring their labs, of course, we're gonna monitor their blood pressure, help them rise slowly, so preventing orthostatic hypotension. We should give this medication on an empty stomach, and we need to use caution in patients who are using lithium and who are on NSAIDs. Um, if given with patients who are on lithium, can actually increase the dose a dangerous amount, increase the effects of the lithium, and then on NSAIDs, it can actually decrease the effects. So avoid salt substitutes that contain potassium because again, we're at risk for hyperkalemia here. So we need to be careful when it comes to giving them extra potassium. So this was ACE inhibitors. Let's move on to beta blockers. Now let's talk about beta blockers. So beta blockers work by blocking sympathetic stimulation on the heart. 
So they block the effect of epinephrine, which is a hormone, right, if we remember that. So they block epinephrine, which causes a decrease in the person's heart rate and contractility. It also decreases the rate of AV conduction. There's beta-1 and beta-2. So when we talk about the heart, we're talking about beta-1. And then we're talking about the lungs, which is my terrible drawing of the lungs, uh, is beta-2. You can remember this because you have one heart and two lungs. The big thing when it comes to this is bronchoconstriction. That's something we want to keep an eye out for. Some side effects when it comes to beta blockers are bradycardia. And again, anything underlined in green is common. Anything underlined in red is dangerous. So bradycardia, so a really slow heart rate, too slow. Lethargy, congestive heart failure, weakness, and then bronchial constriction, which I talked about because of the beta 2. Because of the bronchial constriction, this type of medication is contraindicated in people who already have respiratory problems like COPD and asthma. One random other thing I put with a little asterisk here, certain types of beta blockers should not be used if the patient is diabetic. And those are atenolol and metapropolol because they decrease the patient's insulin levels. They block insulin production from the pancreas and that in turn decreases their overall insulin levels. And if you're a diabetic, that's of course very dangerous. So contraindicated in people who have respiratory disorders like this and possibly diabetics depending on which um, specific one is being ordered. And then you'll see here for the examples, they also have a little something in common. The ending is LOL. So this is the generic name of these medications. So if you're having trouble remembering, oh, is this meta beta blocker, an ACE inhibitor, a calcium channel blocker? If it ends in LOL, it's probably a beta blocker. So what are our nursing interventions when it comes to beta blockers? Of course, we're going to be checking our blood pressure on our patients, but now we're actually going to be very um, diligent about checking their heart rate as well. So we're going to hold this type of medication if their blood pressure and or their heart rate is too low. We're going to assess for overall weakness, dizziness, and possible fainting. An important teaching that we want to tell our patient is to never abruptly stop taking it. So they wake up one day and say, I've been having really good blood pressures lately. I just don't think I'm going to take it anymore. That's not a good idea because it can cause rebound hypertension. Now let's move on to calcium channel blockers. Now we've made it to see calcium channel blockers. So the way calcium channel blockers work, they block calcium influx into the heart and arteries. And if you remember, calcium is what forces the heart to be even stronger, right? So if we're blocking it, we're decreasing the force of contraction which will decrease the heart rate, and then we're also decreasing peripheral vascular resistance. And all of this is a good thing because it causes the blood vessels to relax, which causes a decrease in our blood pressure, and it decreases the heart's demand for oxygen, which is good, especially if your patient has hypertension and like a CHF or something. Something kind of special about calcium channel blockers is they are often the first choice medication by the doctor. So if you are newly diagnosed with hypertension and they're trying to figure out what med to put you on, it might be a calcium channel blocker that they start you out with besides the beta blockers and the ACE inhibitors. They go, let's see how this works first. To remember the name of some commonly prescribed calcium channel blockers, it's very nice drugs. So verapamilis V, Nifedipine is N, and then daltiazam is D. So very nice drugs. And you'll see what I did here is I underlined P-I-N-E. We talked in ACE inhibitors how a lot of them end in P-R-I-L and beta blockers end in L-O-L. Some calcium channel blockers will end in P-I-N-E. Not all of them, of course, as you can see, these two don't. So don't think of this as like a hard and fast rule. Every single one of them will end in P-I-N-E, but a lot of them do. So that's something that can help you remember. Some nursing interventions, things the nurse needs to know about this, is that they should be given before meals. Of course, we're gonna monitor their blood pressure. These patients also need to be weighed because they are at risk for fluid overload gaining too much weight because of the edema. 
And then random, but still important, is they are to avoid grapefruit and grapefruit juice. Some side effects of calcium channel blockers include edema. And remember, anything in green is common and anything in red is dangerous. So swelling, especially of the lower extremities, nausea, headaches, bradycardia, constipation, and then the scary one is arrhythmia. And think about that. Think about why that's happening. Because we are blocking calcium, so we are changing the contractility of the heart. So that might throw them in to a different rhythm, right? So this is important. You need to know this about calcium channel blockers. And then this little thing here is just a little way to remember some important things about calcium channel blockers. If you see how a lot of them end in D-I-P-I-N-E, so we have D-I-P-I-N-E here. D is for dizziness, it can cause dizziness. I is it improves your blood pressure, it improves your hypertension. That's a good thing, that's the reason they're taking it. P is for people of color. So people of color and the elderly actually really benefit from calcium channel blockers. So that's why it's one of the most commonly prescribed and um, first choice meds. I is for intense headaches, so it can cause intense headaches for our patients. N is for our no grapefruit juice. Remember, we're not giving them that. And then E is for the edema. The edema in the lower extremities, that's common, a common side effect of calcium channel blockers. Now, I know in this video we talked about a bunch of different types of meds, and they are used for other things. Some of these are used for CHF and um, angina, but this video really was more focused on how they work in preventing hypertension, how are they used as antihypertensives. So our ABCs, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. I know it's hard, sometimes we get them all mixed up and get them confused, so I hope this video was helpful in you kind of distinguishing between the three. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.